On November 15, 1967, U.S. Air Force test pilot Major Michael Adams achieved a remarkable feat in the history of aviation and in the history of spaceflight. Flying an experimental rocket-powered airplane known as the X-15, Adams traveled to an altitude that brought him to the very edge of space. Shortly after achieving the altitude necessary to qualify his mission as a spaceflight by U.S. flight rules, Adams encountered problems with the aircraft. The X-15 spun out of control and began to break into pieces as it sped back to Earth. Adams was killed in the accident. His death served as testimony of the dangers inherent in the effort to reach outer space and as a testament to the extraordinary valor of the test pilot. The pilots of the X-15 program were given the task of exploring flights at hypersonic speeds, that is, speeds of more than five times the speed of sound, which is expressed technically as Mach 5. In carrying out their research, they would also stretch their flights to altitudes of more than 80 kilometers, the boundary at which they would, by U.S. standards, pass out of the Earth's atmosphere and into space although international flight rules set the line at 100 kilometers. The first X-15 flight took place on June 8, 1959. Over the course of nine years, until the 199th and final flight on October 24, 1968, the pilots of the X-15 program would gather invaluable data about the dynamics of hypersonic flight which would shape the future course of the U.S. space program into the space shuttle era. In doing so, they would also achieve feats of speed and altitude that seem even more remarkable when considered in the context of their time. In his X-15 flight of July 17, 1962, Robert White reached an altitude of 95,940 meters qualifying by U.S. standards as a spaceflight, and making White just the seventh person to fly in space. One year later, on July 19, 1963, Joe Walker piloted an X-15 to an altitude of just over 106,000 meters, satisfying both the U.S. and international concepts of what constitutes a flight into outer space. Walker repeated his feat the following month, on August 22, 1963, when he achieved an altitude of just under 108,000 meters. In addition to Walker, White, and Adams, five other X-15 pilots flew the rocket-powered craft to altitudes that qualified as space flights by U.S. rules. They were Joe Engel, who made three X-15 space flights in 1965, William Dana, who flew two X-15 space flights, and William Knight, John McKay, and Robert Rushworth. There were a total of just 12 pilots who flew the X-15. The select group included legendary test pilot Scott Crossfield, who in 1953 had become the first person to fly faster than twice the speed of sound, longtime test pilot Milt Thompson, and U.S. Navy flyer Forrest Peterson. They were joined by a young test pilot who would in time become better known for his command of another, even more unique experimental craft, Neil Armstrong. As an employee of NASA's predecessor, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, Armstrong flew a wide array of experimental aircraft, including seven flights in the X-15. He was selected as a member of NASA's second group of astronauts in September 1962 and first flew in space during Gemini 8 in March 1966. During his second spaceflight, as commander of Apollo 11 in July 1969, he became the first pilot to land a vehicle on the surface of the moon, an achievement, some would say, entirely well suited to an alumni of the small fraternity of individuals who piloted the remarkable X-15.